Hello mate, nice to see you and thank you for turning up for tonight's premiere and I hope you enjoy it. Please take advantage of the uh, live chat that's running alongside the video. Um, if you are actually watching this uh, not live then you can still take part in the comment section below. So uh, thanks for turning up as I said and me and Toon really hope you enjoy our hard work. <laughs> So today we're going to start draining one of our tilapia ponds and the main idea is to, to get it all drained out, remove all the fish uh, and then start preparing it to turn it into our red claw crayfish pond. So there's lots to do, lots of water to shift, so let's get started. Hi missus, work as a team didn't we? Alright, are you going to do it all on your own here? Yeah? I see. Bye. So we've got two tilapia ponds. The one to the right near the house is the uh, tabtim, which is the uh, the ruby or the pink tilapia. Uh, but the one that we're going to start draining today is the common tilapia. They're sort of like a silvery grey. There's a couple of other little species of fish in here, um, and so a couple of big sucker fish which uh, eat algae and uh, fish poo. So uh, there'll be a few other things to show you as well. There's also shed loads of shrimp and uh, snails in here. We'll be removing those. We'll probably eat some shrimp and uh, boost the snail stocks in, in, in the other ponds. So the trick is to get the water out as quick as possible. Um, we're going to run two pumps. That's all we've got at the moment. And uh, <clears throat> after a couple of hours, we'll then be able to sort of like guesstimate how long it's going to take. The idea is to move the bulk of the water today uh, and then tomorrow morning start super early and get the rest of it out. Uh, it's too much to do all in one day and uh, of course you've got to be careful if there's not enough oxygen in there your fish will start to, to perish. Um, but Toon posted already on Facebook that we're doing this and uh, we've also got the Ben-Hur chariot. Toon's sister and her husband are back in the village at the moment staying with the mum so we might rope them into uh, catching and going and selling some some of these tilapia um, because we haven't been growing monosex tilapia they're all different sizes in here ranging from really small juveniles fingerlings uh, right up to fit uh, right up to almost one kg so uh, we'll, uh, we'll be selling all of those hopefully restocking other areas and uh, eating plenty as well right tune's finally here so we can go and get the pumps out of the lake it's been so so hot and we've had heat this well we've had temperatures this high before but uh, not this consistent for such a long period of time uh, the lake level has been starting to drop a little bit more rapidly but we've been pumping out um, a, a greater volume for the duck area so I think that combined with the uh, the excessive prolonged heat dropping the levels in here can't wait to get this pumped out as well but we're going to uh, postpone pumping out of here for a few days right down there you'll see uh, I've set up the pipe work and we've got a submersible pump and a, and a pond pump as well so we're going to whip both of those out we're going to run one from a generator that's the big pump and then uh, run our pond pump from the solar system Right, we've now switched to nogging cam, so potluck whether you're going to be able to see what I'm doing or not. Quite straightforward really. You alright? What happened? Tune trying to throw herself in the duck pond by the sounds of things. Snake scaring system. Of course that won't scare off the uh, resident 
10 metre anaconda. Mama said, oh, I didn't pull my shorts up, did I? Oh dear. I normally put them up Simon Cowell height. Okay, that's our small capacity pond pump. That's what we've been using for the ducks. One submersible pump as well. Both pumps we've had for quite a few years and uh, never had any trouble with them. They're very, very reliable. I've got wet balls and slippy flip flops. A flotation device. And we're gonna need lots of pipe work as well. Now the two pumps we're using, they're not really classed as, you wouldn't class them as a, a large, capac large capacity pumps, but it's all we've got and um, using a combination of the two at the same time I think we can get the water out quick enough. We've got both pumps into position. So the one on the right is a submersible pump going to the long hose, one meter, 100 meter hose that's gonna water the, the cassava and the palms. And we're gonna run that off the generator because it's quite heavy usage that. And then the one on the left there uh, is coming up here. This is our pond pump. It's gonna run off the solar. We're gonna do that first just to make sure it runs all right. Uh, when we've got the jenny running we'll, we'll put them both on that uh, this pipe work currently is going into the tab tin pond also got some tin foil barb in there as well so we'll get this topped up right to the top um, and then we'll top the other ponds up as well so fingers crossed the first test will go well there'll be a few leaks with these push uh, push fit pipes they're not the best fit you're supposed to glue them but this is the main reason we didn't glue anything we're always moving stuff around so we'll give it a whirl fingers crossed well it's sucking no leaks here I thought we might get a leak here because it's got to bend quite a bit to get over the top but I think it's all right and we're in. It's been a real pain in the arse this generator since we've had it, but it's a miracle that it's still going. Hopefully I haven't jinxed it and soon can get it going in a minute, but it's been a load of bollocks. Had it repaired about four or five times. Isn't it dear? Yeah. That's right. Huh? What'd you say? That's right. You say I'm right? Bloody hell. I'm not saying you're right. Oh, that's right. No, I'm right. Yeah. So the beast fired up all right. First time of asking. So this pond will start dropping a little bit quicker now we'll run this into the evening um, so that in the morning we can just come out early and uh, we'll probably run off the jenny while it's still still dark the last sort of like hour of darkness and then switch over to the to the solar for the for the last little bit while we're in there uh, we'll also have to be out here and make sure keep on checking that this pond hasn't got too high what we don't want is the the water to come up on the on the shelf here um, otherwise you, you just get loads of birds we get quite a few birds anyway and uh, it's, the, it's the main reason that you don't want to be putting a well one of the reasons you don't want to be putting a marginal shelf around any of your fish ponds in Thailand the wading birds out here there's bloody thousands of them 
so uh, if you've got a marginal shelf for them they'll just sit on there and stand on there and pick off your fish all day if you look at the fish down here it's a lap of your light to be at the top so easy pickings uh, it always used to surprise me when I first come to the Thailand how steep the sides of fish ponds are uh, they are dangerous uh, I admit that but the other main reason that we have such steep sides apart from um, preventing birds standing on the shelf to, to eat all your fish is a lot of the fish jump when there's heavy rains uh, we've already seen some tilapia and some tin foil barb trying to jump out with these pumps going uh, but the walking catfish uh, anything anything air breathing like the walking catfish the climbing perch the snakehead all those sorts of fish uh, they all start jumping in the heavy rains and they can cover quite uh, quite big distances of land so we've already picked out or caught a couple of climbing perch in this pond and there were zero in here when we first stocked it so it just shows you they've they've come from that pond over there that pond's got a bit of everything in so even if you keep your levels low if the sides are wet and it's heavy rains it's it's just a strong natural instinct that these fish have to uh, to get out and uh, populate other areas one interesting thing that I've noticed I was half expecting it but not at this rate the Baduk pond which is the uh, our Malaysian catfish pond uh, the levels on here they have been dropping every day a little bit because it's just been so fiercely hot um, and of course behind here we've got the lake with the levels dropping there now our land slopes down into a basin effect like that so as the levels drop down there then this drops as well so there's that but it's been accelerated as the levels in this pond have been dropping so it just tells me that some water is uh, seeping back through down here and if I was over the other side looking this way you can see that this side the wall of the pond there is water seeping through so uh, it's probably going to take a little bit longer than it would do normally if it was a, a standalone pond so the idea is once the tilapia pond is probably about halfway drained we will then put the pumps into here and the main reason being there's going to be lots of baby fish fish eggs um, and shrimp so we don't want to populate the other tilapia pond with them um, but it is good free food for the baduk here even if it doesn't kill the baby fish and the, the, the shrimp it makes them dizzy and what happens the the catfish just hang around where you're shooting the uh, the water in everything comes out all dizzy and it's it's easy pickings for them so we'll try and get that on camera for you as well Right, the uh, generator's been running about an hour, hour and a half. So, I don't know whether it's really doing it justice on the camera, but it is dropping quickly. You can see as a yardstick down the side, how high up the sides, the green gold, the, uh, the rosette water lettuce is uh, getting marooned there. So it is dropping proper quick now. So we'll be out here tonight and uh, keep an eye on things let's have a look at the pink tilapia pond it's not a pink pond it's pink tilapia very good filling up nicely they're looking happy it's getting to feeding time so yeah Recognise Uncle Lee in his uh, feeding location. Look good. It's uh, coloured up the water quite a bit, pumping, pumping in air, and it's, uh, it's agitating it quite a bit. But it's still, it's really good. We're, I've said before, we are really, really blessed on our property with natural springs. It's, uh, it's excellent. The lowest the water has ever dropped is well. If you have a look here now that's about three foot lower than it's ever been before Toon said tonight if uh, if we can get enough water out she's going in here with the landing net tonight I wouldn't bet against it 
Uh, we've seen a few of the tin for Bahab twat themselves on the side uh, over there where the, the water's shooting in. Oh, there's just, I don't know whether it picked it up. Let's go round then. We might be lucky enough to get one on the, on video. Normally they sort of like jump sideways and know where the side is and, but uh, a couple of them have twatted themselves. So we might have to relocate, relocate it. I did say that to two and she said, well, if they twat themselves to death, we'll eat them. Fair do, isn't it? Natural selection. You see all the tilapia following me now. Good, exciting times. I've waited so long to drain a pond and catch the fish. So, really looking forward to it. We do take some fish out. Oh, I've missed it. I panned round and it bled it. Well, if I was like, no, I think we might have seen that. I'll, uh, I'll try and, uh, when I'm editing it, I'll try and get back to uh, the point where it jumped out and, and then zoom in on it. Uh, back at the uh, the village house when we had the pond there, and uh, basically this sort of force of water, this volume of water we had moving there with the pump there because we had three ponds, so we had a, a really good pump there. And uh, we, we got hold of some of the, uh, about a cow, which are very, very similar to the, um, the tinfoil barb. And uh, they weren't used to the pump we put in there, but they jumped about three foot straight out the bloody pond. So uh, we rescued a couple, but uh, I don't know how many ended up inside Klopp and Bambi but, and, Bam, uh, and Spoon, but there, there was a few that disappeared. But yeah, very athletic fish. Love it. Love anything fishy. Well, apart from prawn cocktail walkers crisps, they were minging. Fishy mungy. Touch them with a barge pole, guys. If you like those, there's something wrong with your taste buds big time. Gang, you take care of the pipes. Yeah? Take care of the pipes, girl? Okay. Good girl, aren't you? Eh? Hey? Useless, but good girl. Alright, settle down. Settle, settle. So, last night, I must confess, uh, we probably weren't the most sensible of people that are going to be working hard today. When we ran out of fuel late at night, rather than drive into town and uh, get some more, we decided to open a couple of bottles of beer instead. And then the karaoke came out. So uh, we were wrecking the mic till the wee small hours. We turned into Invincible and then uh, this morning, I think we're just sweating beer. So uh, not advisable, but he who dares wins, Rodders. We've got the fish orders now and uh, the pond's, I would say, a third of the way down. So we're not going to stop. Self-inflicted, not looking for any, uh, any sympathy at all from you guys because you never give us any anyway. All right then, let's carry on. True to form, guys. While well, I've been doing important stuff like irrigation, Toon couldn't resist throwing the throwing net in. And it's got stuck, so she got all excited because there's fish in it. That means we've got to get in there now, about three hours ahead of schedule. Looks like she's busy collecting hoi jub. Right then, couldn't wait, could you, missus? You've not got the net ready or anything, you? You not touch the bottom? No, no. Uh, you look uh, at me. I'm gonna go touch uh, the bottom. Uh, uh, uh. Honey, my head, my head, uh. my head. I'm on the bottom. Put that way long, man. Looking, looking. Oh. Uh. You see? Uh, it's soft mud, isn't it? You it. No, I want. It's going to take about three weeks to pump the water out. Where's the line? Line, maybe. Oh, but it. Let it come up. Now, just one thing, how am I going to get back out? Huh? Just one thing, how am I going to get back out? Well, most of the water's down to about waist height now. And uh, Toon's just repositioning the 
submersible pump the uh, the other pond pump that we've got has uh, just malfunctioned so we've took that out and we'll have to strip it down don't really want to just run one pump take too long um, and while we've been sucking the water out we've been playing so uh, we've got a I don't know probably 100 fish and about 5,000 shrimp uh, loads of hoi com or hoi jub we've only been keeping the the big ones uh, there's probably more small ones and big ones I think we've just left all the small ones in there um, we've, we've got about five or six crab as well there's some really big ones in there um, in the crevices in the in the walls we need to try and get them out but they, they go across land anyway so we're always going to get a few in here and uh, one really good story is the uh, the hoy garb the freshwater mussels that we introduced out the river they've grown like crazy they're a really good size and there's plenty of them so uh, the, the, the soil type or clay type soil on the bottom certainly suits them so, uh, and on all the ponds are the same, all four. So that's really good. We only put them in about that big. And now I'd say they're at least that big. Some of them are a little bit bigger. It's good. You can see it's just, just over waist height for Toon. Oh. <laughs> oh, Toon's been hitting the booby once and in the chest. I've been hitting the chest, the shoulder, and right on the Swede as well. It's, uh, it's just thick with fish and as you move around you spook them they, they jump everywhere so we've used the throwing net a couple of times and uh, we've gone around with the landing nets but it's still a little bit too deep but great fun I'll just come out to uh, to dry out I was going a bit pruney it'd be a shame if we're just down to one pump for the rest of the uh, project but we'll get there but it's speeding up as it as it's tapered of course the area is getting smaller and smaller uh, and the uh, the draining is, is speeding up even with one pump I think we'll be all right now we're just going to keep the generator going and keep fishing them out I think Toon's going to shoot off and get a beer in a minute and take what fish we've got out to Toon's mum and then carry on it looks like it's going to carry on until tomorrow now the water's low enough for us to use the lift net now so Toon's just going to throw that in and uh, we're going to get busy. Oosh! Good throw. How are you going to lift it up from there? Yeah. Right then, just show you, like I was saying on the first day, when we get near the end of sucking the water out, you get lots of shrimp and baby fish and little aquatic insects and stuff, that, things like that. So it's an ideal opportunity to put the last few hours of uh, the water that we're pumping out into here it's only trickling out uh, because the pump is getting further and further away so uh, it's only a small pump and it's running off solar so th th this particular pond pump I would say is running at about a quarter of what it normally does but it's still good enough to feed the uh, the baduk you can see them there they are a little bit shy but nice to see free food little bit of extra oxygen for them as well happy cats true to form guys Toon hasn't waited she shot straight in there forgot the bowl for scooping the fish up out of the lift net she can't wait but yeah this is a uh, this is the good stuff now and I'd just like to show you my uh, fishing attire The reason being, although it's quite a soft clay bottom, there's lots and lots of small stones in there that cut your feet once you've been in there a while. Here's the uh, proof of the pudding about our freshwater mussels or clams. Brilliant. These were put in, oh, less than half the size. Yeah. How long ago was that? Not long ago. Mm, couple months, three, three, four months, something mm. like that. So that's brilliant, really cool. We were getting loads yesterday in the net and uh, really they'll be on the bottom rather than in the side. We get some that have burrowed into the side, but uh, 
yeah they like the really soft stuff so um when we were chasing fish with the landing net yesterday we were, we were getting two or three in the net so uh loads of gung as well a little shrimp that's a small one but uh they're busy biting my legs at the moment so uh, they're quite sharp if you uh, have a close-up of a, a shrimp you see the uh the little claws on them and uh, they like to nibble your skin uh, that's not quite right as much as I like waterfalls here's something for you that's a little bit different so, so these this that's the native hoi kong and this one the hoi cherry so you can see it's got more of a nipple on on there <laughs> that's the first proper size one with the lift net there's a couple of others that jumped out <laughs> Good shot, misses. Oi! Oh, big one got out. <laughs> oh, they're getting out every time. Come on again. <laughs> I lose about half. <laughs> This time, big ones. Nah. Nah. Oh. oh, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, that's good size for steam. Mm. This is going to be like fi fish fireworks. Oh. <laughs> Nearly out. <laughs> See the other one get out. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Big one bail out. <laughs> These good size for the six kg, don't they? Yeah, so what I mean, we need to take them out. And lift up there. Oh fuck! That just happened. Mm. That smack you. Oi, got him! <laughs> Good try, mate. <laughs> it's going well, guys. Plenty of big ones now, and uh, as the water levels dropping more and more, the catch rate is increasing as well. So, brilliant fun, really good. Okay, so we just finished the first lot of grading. This is what we got left over. Uh, thousands of shrimp, quite a few crab, uh, a bucket of point, uh, two kg of tilapia there, ready for one order, uh, and then we've got a bucket of tiny little tilapia and gung that we're going to put in where the where the ducks are uh, let loose to feed so it's, it's not worth throwing these in the lake we've got more than enough fish in there so it's free food for the ducks for a few days right i'm off to uh give this lot to the ducks that'll make them happy i could put it all in the uh the duck pond but we don't want tilapia growing in there we had a few in there before that grew pretty well but we don't want them competing with the walking catfish so good for the ducks anyway good protein and they uh, they'll probably go crazy once they uh, spot a few fish on the surface This, ladies and gentlemen, is what Toon calls a chocker, and uh, it's almost prehistoric. Incredible fish! 
almost like a shark and uh, no scales at all but look at that algae eaters very very good for your ponds and aquariums superb I hope the camera's picking this up so I'm just moving it around a bit but there's another another one of them in here there's quite a bit of armor on them if you do it the other way that'll uh, rip through your skin quite easily a bit like a, a I think a, a rip saw a bit like a rip saw catfish but I think the reason we got it because we left the drop net in and uh, Oh, got some egg there. And I think they were eating the algae off the, uh, or mud off the uh, the net. Quite spiky. Oh, got little barbels as well here. Right. He'll be going in another pond. อันนี้เป็นปลาช็อกเกอร์นะคะที่ซื้อมาตั้งแต่ตัวเท่านิ้วก้อยณตอนนี้ดูนะคะว่าใหญ่แค่ไหนใหญ่มากช็อกเกอ
Oh, good, good, good. That is a good one. Oh, 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 oh,